It isn't easy being green, but Vancouver Public Schools pulls it off. The national environmental honor the district earned and how elementary students celebrate Earth Day. Plus, a senior prepares to wrap up his high school career, but it wasn't easy. Why can't I do something equally as amazing, if not more? How he propelled himself to a college education and <laughs> high drama and a last second victory in the battle of the books. Hello and welcome to In the Know, I'm Nick Vole. U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan makes a major announcement from Washington, D.C. Vancouver Public Schools is one of just nine districts from across the nation to be honored for its commitment to the environment. What they have in common is a clear and compelling vision, outstanding teamwork, and extraordinary leadership. Regardless of location, construction, or student population, they demonstrate a real commitment to serving students with the most exceptional, healthy, and sustainable learning environments and instruction you can find anywhere. Secretary Duncan made VPS a Green Ribbon Schools District Sustainability Awardee. In a nutshell, the district is among the nation's best at conserving energy and money, improving health and wellness in its buildings, and teaching students how to improve the environment. There's a lot of exciting things going on in our schools, and that really is what this district award is about. It's about everyone's collective efforts. It's sustainable uh, within our own organization. Every department is reviewing how do they impact the environment and how do they make those positive changes. The district has programs in place at every school ranging from simple recycling and composting to career training in environmental fields. Since 2005 the district has reduced its energy use by more than 15 percent which translates to around two and a half million dollars in savings. Several schools in Vancouver have mobilized teachers and students into green teams. And on Earth Day, we caught up to a couple of those teams as they work to improve water quality at their schools. It's unassuming, but grass is more important than you might think. Students at Sacagawea Elementary know all about it, and they celebrate Earth Day by planting native grass in the school's bioswale, an area that collects rainwater. When it rains, then the ground will soak up some of the water, but if it like rains really heavily, then some of the water will eventually flow down into the stream. The water that makes it that far affects the fish that call the stream home. It's like if there's trash all over the place, it could be carrying plastic, all sorts of stuff. The grass these students are planting serves as a natural filter. All the filth that we make, that's gonna, um, it's gonna kind of, instead of having it go out on the streets, it's gonna, where it's gonna kind of like soak it up. Chinook Elementary uses Earth Day to celebrate a similar project. In this assembly, students learn how their classmates planted grass around a tree and a grate to keep mud out. When the mud goes into the drain, it, um, all the drains lead to rivers and oceans, and that could pollute the fish, and the fish could um, not be able to breathe and they could die. Chinook, Sacagawea, and a number of other Vancouver public schools have green teams made up of students that spearhead projects like these. They recycle, compost food scraps and encourage energy conservation, among other things. Kids learn valuable lessons about the environment and responsibility. I just think that it feels good that you're helping the environment. It's just nice to know that we'll be helping the earth. The green team at Sacagawea Elementary is among the best in the state, earning Green Ribbon School certification from the U.S. Department of Education. Chinook just became an official green school at the state level. And congrats to Geyser Middle School, which just earned level four status in the state green schools program. To get there, Geyser improved air quality inside the school, improved the efficiency of its sinks, and implemented environmental education for teachers and students. Fort Vancouver horticultural teacher Amy Sidron earns an environmental honor of her own. Amy was selected for the 2014 Sylvia and Gordon McWilliams Evergreen Award, handed out by the City of Vancouver's Urban Forestry Commission. She was selected for her work with students to improve our area's urban forest. Amy also hosts The Greenhouse, a gardening program produced by the District TV studio. You can see episodes at youtube.com slash vanisdtv 
or on Comcast Channel 328 as part of the VPS Power Half Hour. We all take different paths through life. We can't change where we start the journey or the roadblocks along the way, and we can't do it alone. Amanda Richter shares with us the story of a Fort Vancouver senior whose path is leading him straight to college. Congratulations to Jose Scott from Fort Vancouver High School. March 26th was a banner night for senior Jose Scott, winner of the prestigious General George C. Marshall Youth Leadership Award. It was a fitting honor for the modest young leader. I was like, what leadership? I'm not doing anything. And I, I really didn't think that I had any chance. But Jose has long been influential at Fort. His sophomore year, he formed an anti-bullying club. We figured if we couldn't stop bullying completely, we could, we could tell people the harmful effects of bullying, because that's, that's almost as, as important as telling them to, to not bully. It's letting them know what bullying does to people. He's also an honor roll student, yearbook editor, key club member, and Boys and Girls Club Volunteer of the Month, just to name a few of his many accomplishments. Yet school and life weren't always so easy. The summer before his junior year, Jose's mother passed away without warning. He's, he's gone through a lot of challenges in his life, and, and what's amazing to me about Jose is that he um, has transformed those into action, into um, compassion and empathy, and hard work and dedication. Thanks to his mother, a home health care provider for the developmentally disabled, Jose and his three siblings learned important lessons about serving others. That little seed that was planted in, in all of my siblings, just it really grew and flourished as we, as we grew up. And when my mother passed away, it just, that it blossomed. His junior year, Jose formed another club with the goal of engaging minority students and giving back to the community. The club created toiletry kits for homeless students. We were going to give it to the homeless on the streets, but then we decided, why, why go outside of our school when there are people in our own school without things that they need to live. Jose says that a large part of his leadership and success is thanks to his involvement in Advancement Via Individual Determination, or AVID, a program that helps underrepresented students prepare for college. I think AVID, AVID's, AVID's a great option for if, if you're, you want to go to college, you just you don't know how to get to college. This year, Fort's AVID students got a chance to participate in an early admissions interview with reps from Washington State University's Pullman and Vancouver campuses. Being accepted was motivation to apply to other colleges as well. I had them sitting down doing Central and Eastern's, finding, you know, it's not so hard. If I can get accepted to WSU like this, there's other possibilities for me. Later, 22 students got a chance to tour the Pullman campus. We got to really picture ourselves there, which really helped you. Uh, to know if you wanted to go there or not. However, Jose plans to stay closer to home, studying political science next year at Washington State University, Vancouver. And after college? So the dream job would be to be an ambassador. <laughs> but the lessons learned in AVID and the culture will carry Jose wherever he goes. It helps us with college and admissions and SATs and whatnot. I mean, that's, that's good stuff that probably I would have never known about if it weren't for AVID, but the sense of family that you're gonna have even after you graduate high school is just, is, it's great. For In The Know, I'm Amanda Richter. Thanks Amanda, and congratulations to Jose. Congratulations also go out to Lauren Clark, a junior at Columbia River High School. Lauren was named the 2014 High School Woman of Distinction by Washington State University, Vancouver. The award goes to women who inspire, mentor, and empower others. Like Jose, Lauren is also a member of AVID and participates in a number of charities. Students at Philida Elementary School compete to see who's the biggest reader in the battle of the books. They bounce onto the stage ready to compete. This team, calling itself the geniuses of NIM after a classic children's book, is the defending champion of Philida Elementary School's battle of the books. Being the defending champions was kind of cool because um, we knew that coming back to Battle of the Books as a team this year, we would have a lot of competition, but that was fine with us. In a game show style competition, these young readers demonstrate their knowledge of 27 mm -hmm. different books. I read every single book on the list except for one book, which the third graders or fourth graders, they started a fan club on, so the library had a little supply and demand problem. <laughs> Convincing them to read a lot wasn't hard. 
I kind of have bookshelves where I have books where that I've read and books that I haven't read on my bookshelf and they're pretty much all read. <laughs> But they weren't the only team that prepared. Question after question, round after round, the three teams are neck and neck, all the way up to the final question. We were just freaking out because if we got the, the question, we would win. But if we didn't get the question, we would lose. The question came in and another team buzzed first. But they couldn't come up with the answer and the geniuses of NIM got their chance. <laughs> For these students, I love reading. It's pretty great to know they're now in the book. The history book is just the second team ever at Philida to win back to back championships. It's like a dream come true. Several other schools also have Battle of the Books competitions throughout the year. Video production students from Geyser Middle School get a chance to learn from the pros. They took a field trip to KGW Television in Portland. After meeting some of the on air talent, the students toured the newsroom and talked to behind the camera folks. The highlight for many students, however, was the studio. They sat on the news desk and got a chance to see how the weather person does his or her job on computers and the green screen. Well, that's just about it for us. Thank you for watching In the Know. Until next time, I'm Nick Bowl.